السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ تعالی وبرکاتہ ان اللہ و ملائکتہ یسلون علی النبی یا ایہا الذین آمنوا صلوا علیہ وسلموا تسلیما اللہم صل علی سیدنا و نبینا و مولانا محمد طب القلوب و دوائیہ و عافیت الابدانی و شفائیہ و نور الابصاری و ضیائیہ و آلہی و صحبہی و بارک وسلم دائما عبدا غوث اعظم بمنے بے سروں ساما مدد قبلہ دی مدد کعبہ ایما مدد قادریم نعرائے یا غوث اعظم میزنم دمز شیخ احمد رضا خان قطب عالم میزنم سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ باد مسلک سرکار اعلیٰ اعلیٰ حضرت زندہ باد یا الہی مسلک احمد رضا خان زندہ باد حفظ ناموں سے رسالت کا جو ذمہ دار ہے سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ باد حامل فیض رضا مصطفیٰ امداد کن اے شافع امم شہ زی جاہ لے خبر للہ لے خبر میرے للہ لے خبر اول پریز جٹھوں میں تھے اللہ درود ان سلامز اپون آکے نامدار مدنی تاجدار حضرت احمد مشتبہ محمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پیس بلیسنگز ان سیلیٹیشنز اپون دی انبیاء کرام اہل بیت اتھار صحابہ کرام خلفہ راشدین تبعین تبع تابعین ائمہ مشتہدین اولیاء کاملین and all those who will follow the path until the last day. Once again, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His infinite mercy and through the wasila of Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for granting us the tawfiq ke khair to remember Him and His beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> today's uh, discussion and today's uh, session deals with ruhaniyat and spirituality and before i go any further i'm going to request one and all of you to recite durood in the court of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina maulana muhammadin wa ala ali sayyidina maulana muhammadin salatan daimatan maqbulatan tu'addi biha anna haqqahu al-azim Today, during the session, as I just said, before we recited the Ruh Sharif, that we want to talk about Ruhaniyat and about spirituality. And as you must have noticed that the topic for discussion is enhance your spirituality. Many people do not even understand what we mean and what is meant by the word Ruhaniyat or spirituality. You must understand that spirituality and spiritualism in reality is religiousness, it is piety, it is taqwa and the deep sense of it is mysticism. But the basic understanding of ruhaniyat, of spirituality is taqwa, is piety. And as we mentioned in other discussions over the course of this week, that taqwa and piety is what? It is to be Allah fearing. One who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has piety. One who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taqwa. And one who does not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reality has no piety and taqwa because piety and taqwa depends on your fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person needs to strives sincerely to fulfill his faraid and his wajibat and his sunan and his nawafil etc. in his life and more importantly his faraid and his wajibat and his sunan and when one fulfills these responsibilities they have fulfilled their obligations in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on these obligation, obligatory acts or compulsory acts etc. but with all of this a person needs to rectify his life or her life. <clears throat> you need to make your life better. And to do that, you need to become a better person. You need to become a true Muslim. You need to become somebody who is an example that when somebody looks at you, they should say that this is a Muslim. 
When somebody sees the way that you walk, they should say that this is a Muslim. When they see the manner in which you behave, they should say that this is a Muslim. And one can attain this blessed character and beauty within yourself if you sincerely and devotedly change yourself positively. If you make positive changes in yourself, and the one way of doing this is to look at the lives of the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we learn ruhaniyat, we learn religiousness, we learn piety, we learn spiritualism from the pious servants of Almighty Allah. Because these are the beloveds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have understood the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have understood what is right and what is wrong more than we will ever understand. Hence, it is of utmost importance for us to adapt in the communities that we live with. But at the same time, adapting does not mean leaving your way of Islam. Adapting does not mean leaving the tariqah. Adapting does not mean leaving your religious responsibilities. It is very important to understand that deen comes first. Deen comes first. Everything else is thereafter. And when we talk about ruhaniyat and and spirituality and enhancing your spirituality, making yourself a spiritually better person, uh, it starts with a very basic discussion. And I'm going to be as brief and basic as possible on this. Whereas ruhaniyat and tasawwuf is a very, very deep discussion. Tasawwuf and ruhaniyat is a very, very deep discussion and not meant for the understanding of just anybody. However, I'm going to try to simply explain a few concepts so that we realize how important it is to better ourselves spiritually. I'm going to start with a very basic discussion and that is the discussion on purification. Now, when I say purification, everybody understands that it means cleanliness and everybody immediately, the bells start ringing in your mind about cleanliness. And I think right now when we talk about cleanliness and purification, the first thing that comes in everybody's mind is the coronavirus. Because we've been told how to stay clean, we've been told to wash our hands, we've been told uh, to cover our mouths when we cough and we've been told to block our noses when we sneeze, etc. And yes, that is what every Muslim is supposed to do. This is what Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa told us more than 1400 years ago. So when you think about purification, that is the first thing that comes to mind, is physical purification, physical cleanliness, purity of the body. In other words, external cleanliness. That's what generally comes to your mind when we talk about cleanliness and and being clean uh, and purifying yourself. However, with physical cleanliness, with being physically clean, there is an importance to be spiritually clean. It is very important to spiritually purify and cleanse yourself. And spiritual purification is that which enhances physical purification. Because if a person is clean of character and he is clean in tabi'at, he is clean in nature, then naturally it will come to him that he should keep his physical self clean. He should keep his body clean. He should keep his environment clean. He should keep the things around him clean. But if his tabi'at, if his nature is not clean, then he will not be able to keep anything around him clean. So, in reality, the spiritual aspect is about spiritual purification, about purifying your inner self first. The outer self is there. You do it. You wash your hands, you wash your face, etc. But at the same time, we must understand that it is very important to purify the inner self. The inner self is pure, everything else starts to purify. Because what is on the inner self, what is within the inner self, is what emanates outside. In other words, if the batin, which is the inner self, if the batin is pure, then the zahir is pure. If the batin is corrupt, then the zahir becomes corrupt. Example, if a person's inner self is lost in the thought of sin, then the outer self will slowly start to commit the sin. So it is very important to purify yourself. And when we're talking about purification today, when we're talking about the the, the, the cleansing today, we are talking about it on a spiritual level. Okay? Now, <clears throat> when we talk about rohaniyat and spiritual cleansing and, uh, and, 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 and purifying yourself spiritually, your inner self, the very first thing that we have to start with, the very, very first thing that we have to start with is with the heart. The first thing to do 
is to clean the heart. And this is something that I think everybody knows and everybody understands but we forget. And we tend not to be conscious of it anymore. That how important it is to have a clean heart. How important it is to have a pure heart. Because those with pure hearts are those who have been blessed with closeness in the court of Allah and closeness in the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The importance of a pure heart leads to the purification of everything else. It leads to the purification of your outer self and your environment and your community. But it all starts with the heart. And the purity of the heart, how does it start? It starts by having pure intention, by having good niya. And you know it is the hadith of Bukhari Sharif, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ A part of the hadith of Bukhari Sharif, first hadith of Bukhari Sharif, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ That actions are based on their intention. In other words, the reward of the action is based on the intention. If your intention is, if your intentions are good, inshallah azim, your actions will be babarkat. And they will attain your reward. Now, <clears throat> you must have heard the pious people and you must have even heard I have heard from the time I was very young, you would hear the old people in the community, they used to say in Urdu, Ke dil saaf manzil asan. They always said, dil saaf manzil asan. That if your heart is pure, then it is very easy to get to your destination. To reach your goal is very, very easy. In other words, that first you have to purify your heart. And then whatever you do, Allah will give success in it. You have to take the steps of purifying yourself and doing things with a good near. So today we want to discuss the purification of the heart. I want to talk about the heart. It must be understood that if a person wishes that the mercy and the blessings of Almighty Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should enter into his or her heart, then the first step is to cleanse and purify the heart. Look, let's look at our natural. We've been talking about physical purification earlier. We have soaps and all kinds of cleaning agents to clean our physical body. But how do we clean the heart? How do we clean the heart? And I'm sure you've heard this many times from many ulama. But I'm repeating this because this is the time that we should... As I said in one of the earlier lessons, reflect, we have to think. We have soaps, we have all kinds of cleansing agents to clean our physical body. But how do we clean the heart? The heart is cleansed by zikrullah. The heart is cleansed by zikrullah and zikr mustafa. By remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You and I know, and I've talked about this before on numerous occasions in many of my lectures in the masajid and, and when I travel as well, and I'm reiterating this because I think it's of utmost importance right now in this discussion on, on Ruhaniyat and on enhancing your spirituality, is that we all know how important the heart is and what an important uh, position the heart has in the body. The heart is very important. You know that if the heart stops working, everything else is over. A person can have the strongest arms, he, can have, he or she can have the strongest legs, they can have the best vision, they can have the most powerful hearing, they can have uh, the most uh, amazing eloquence in their speech, uh, they can have all of this. But when a person's heart stops, neither can his hands work, nor can his eyes work, nor can his ears work. Nothing works, all depends on the heart. So the heart holds a very important and the most important part in the body, in the physical body. And obviously the heart is run by the soul. If the soul is gone, then everything is over. But in the physical body, the most important part is the heart. The heart is the badshah, it is the king of the body. Okay? And if you look at medical science, and if you, all of us know that when you go to your doctor, and the doctor says that you have a problem with your heart, it starts to worry you. Why? Because if everything else is okay, and something's wrong with my heart, then it's a trouble. It's something that's, that's worrying me. Because my heart, there's something wrong with my heart. In other words, if the king has an issue, then obviously the subjects that the king controls will have an issue. Likewise in the body, the king is the body, the, the, the heart is the badshah. The heart is the king of the body. And that is why, not only physically, but also spiritually. Not only physically, but also spiritually. The king is, the heart is the king of the body physically, and the heart is the king of the body spiritually also. That is why, my and your beloved master, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that there is a piece of flesh on the left of the body of Bani Adam. There is a piece of flesh on the left of the body of Bani Adam. If that is in order, everything is in order. And if that is ruined, then everything is ruined. Okay, this is the essence of what the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said. He said, the essence of what Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa said, 
is that there is a piece of flesh on the left of the body of Bani Adam. If it is in order, everything is in order. And if it is ruined, everything is ruined. In other words, if it is damaged, everything else is damaged. If it doesn't work properly, nothing else will work properly. There will always be some shortcoming and some shortfall somewhere. And this is very important for us to understand spiritually as well. Not only physically, spiritually as well. If the heart becomes corrupt, then everything else becomes corrupt. If a person's heart is full of guna, if a person's heart becomes blackened because of guna and because of all the wrongs, then the physical body acts in that manner. If the heart is impure, then the eyes will see which is not commanded to be seen. The ears will want to hear that which is haram to hear. The legs will want to take you to a cinema rather than taking you to a mazar or to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your hands would want to touch that which is haram rather than picking up the Holy Quran and reciting it. Why? Because of the disease of the heart. Because of the heart being diseased. Not physically, but spiritual issues. When the heart is being diseased, the spirituality goes away. So it is very important to understand this. And how do you keep the heart clean and pure and away from sins? How do you do this? Atiullah wa atiur Rasul. Atiullah wa atiur Rasul. Obey Allah and obey Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Obey Allah and obey Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how else? Ya ayyuhalladina amanu taqullah. This ayat I've been reading time and over again. You've heard it from great scholars. You've read it in the Holy Quran. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah. Fear Allah. Fear Allah. Wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. And be in the company of the pious. Be in the company of the pious. Remain with the pious people. What will happen? If you remain with those who are pious and you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you obey, strive to obey Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then inshallah al azim the heart will become pure. The heart will become pure. And why is it said so many times? Why do the scholars go on reminding you about this verse? Wa kunu sadiqin. If you listen to the talks of Zu Sayyidi, wa sanadi sarkari taju sharia radiallahu an, the qudb al zaman, if you listen to his talks, you will find that Hudur would often read this ayat of the Holy Quran before he delivered his discourse. Why? To remind you that keeping the company of the pious will make an effect on you. Because it has been mentioned in the Hadith Sharif that the company that you keep is what affects you. The company that you keep is what takes effect on you. So by keeping the company of the pious and by detaching the heart from the love of the world and materialistic things, and you know we have fallen prey to this. Almost all of us have fallen prey to this. That our love for the dunya and the materialistic things has taken us so far away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even though that we are here, we think we are deendar, we think we are so pious, but yet the world has enslaved us. It has taken us away from that which we should be doing. We give priority to dunya and we leave our deen behind. We make dunya primary and we make deen secondary. Many, many people do this in their lives. They would delay their salah to earn some money, but they would not delay earning for the sake of ibadat. Why? Because they made dunya primary. They think that that is their means to everything. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is razakul alamin. Alamin. Allah is the one who gives risk to all of us. Allah is the one who is the sustainer. So always remember, when it comes to spiritually bettering yourself, you must understand that Allah's deen comes first. The command of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes first. So you have to keep the company of pious and not let the love for the world and materialistic things uh, take you away from the love of Allah and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then taint your heart. And when the heart is tainted, what did the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? If that is ruined, then everything is ruined. If that is in order, everything is in order. In other words, the entire body and whatever the body does is in order. You know, at this point, I must share with you something that a very, very beautiful statement I must share with you. A very, very blessed and a very, very beautiful statement I must share with you of Hazrat Sayyidina Shamsuddin Tabrez radiallahu We know what a great mystic and a great Sufi Hazrat Shamsuddin Tabrez radiallahu was. We know that Hazrat Jalaluddin Rumi radiallahu anh, took blessings from him. We know Hazrat Shamsuddin Tabrez radiallahu anh, greatness and his maqam. We know the, the fadilat of Hazrat Sayyidina Shamsuddin Tabrez radiallahu anh. But Hazrat Shamsuddin Tabrez radiallahu anh, subhanallah, he says something very beautifully. He says, once while discussing the dunya, this world, this thing that takes us away and corrupts our hearts, concerning this dunya, this world that we love so much, Hazrat Shamsuddin Tabrez radiallahu anh, once while discussing the world, the physical world and the spiritual world, whilst discussing the physical domain and the ruhani domain, 
Hazrat Shamsuddin Tabriz radiallahu anhu, what does he say? He says, Hazrat Rabia Basriya radiallahu anhu once said, Subhanallah. My mothers and sisters who are listening, Hazrat Rabia Basriya is an example to follow. She was absorbed in the love of Allah and his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She lived her entire life for the pleasure of Allah and his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, when time permits, we will talk one day about her. Hazrat Rabia Basriya concerning her, Hazrat Shamsuddin Tabrez, Shams Tabrez says that Hazrat Rabia Basriya once said, she said something that if you really think about what I'm going to say and what she has said, it will take you into another, into another world. You will, you will be able to spend hours trying to think and understand what she said and analyzing what she said. It may sound like just one statement, one sentence, but it has oceans within it. Hadrat Shams Tabrez is saying that Rabia Basriya said, what did she say? She said, I sent my heart to observe the world. I sent my heart out to observe the world. And it came back. I sent my heart out to observe the world. And it came back. What does it mean? It means, what is she saying? She's saying that the heart wasn't pleased with what it saw. So she says, I sent my heart out to observe the world. And it came back. She says, thereafter, I sent my heart out to observe the spiritual domain. I sent my heart out to observe the Rohani domain. And what does she say? She says, I sent it out to observe the Rohani domain. So that it may, it may, it may observe and see that world as well. And she said, ever since then, my heart has not returned to me. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. She says, ever since then, my heart has not returned to me. Think about these words of Hazrat Rabia Basriya radiallahu anha. That I sent my heart out to observe the world and it came back. It rushed back. And I sent my heart out to observe the spiritual world. And until now, my heart has never returned to me. What is she saying? She said that she has become drowned in the love of her creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the love of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made beloved. Subhanallah. So it is something to think about what Shamsuddin Tabrez quoted the words of Hazrat Rabia Basriya radiallahu anhu. When we talk about purifying the heart. Now you must understand that when a heart becomes tainted, it is like a mirror which has a black sheet covered over it. It is indeed a mirror, but you can see nothing in it, not even your own reflection. Have you noticed? We all know that if you put, take a huge mirror, no matter how big it is, and cover it with a big dark colored sheet, you will not be able to see yourself in it. Why? Because it's covered. But it is a mirror. A heart is still the heart. A heart is still the heart. But because we have sinned and we have done so many gunas, the heart has become so diseased and so blackened because of the gunas, it is like that sheet that is over the mirror. That we cannot even see our own reflections in it. We cannot taste the sweetness of ibadah. We are not able to even look in our hearts and see the reflection of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is descending upon us. Why? Because of our sins that have covered our heart. And what do we need to do? We need to purify the heart. We need to purify the heart because if the heart becomes polluted, if the heart becomes diseased, you know about, you know, you know any disease in the world. If there's a disease and the disease is not treated, at the end of the day, it will kill you. That is by the will of Allah. But on level of understanding, if you do not treat that disease, it will be the cause of your death at the end of the end of the day. Allah will Allah is the one who gives life and life and death. But that will be the excuse for your death. In other words, that if you have a disease and you do not treat it, the disease will become worse. It will become worse. It will become worse. It will increase. Until in the end, there is nothing that you can do about it. I know you all understand this very well. So think about it. When the heart becomes diseased, what do you have to do? You have to quickly treat it. You have to quickly treat it before that disease becomes worse. And when the heart, anything that is diseased, and when it becomes completely diseased, then what happens? It dies. It dies. Okay? It dies. So think about it. On, a, on the level of Rohaniyat, that when the heart becomes polluted, it slowly dies. And there's a difference, you must remember, there's a difference between a sleeping heart and a dead heart. You get a heart that is sleeping because of laziness, because we are lazy, our hearts are asleep. They not act, the heart is not active in ruhaniyat. You do not want to get up for Salatul Fajr because the heart has become lazy spiritually, because you do nothing. We do nothing, I do nothing. That is why it's happening. But when the heart becomes diseased and it dies, then what do you do? Sayyiduna Imam Hassan Basri radiallahu anhu, very great Imam and a very great Mystic and Sufi, Hadrat Imam Hassan Basri radiallahu anhu. Do you know what he says? 
He says that hearts are asleep, hearts that are asleep can be awakened. Hearts that are asleep can be awakened. But he said it is impossible to awaken dead hearts. It is impossible to awaken dead hearts. Alhamdulillah, the hearts of the Sunni Sahihul Akida are in the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi And sometimes because of our wrongs and our laziness, our hearts start to fall asleep. But by the grace of and the mercy of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and if we direct our attention towards the pious and we follow the command of Wakunu Ma'as Sadiqin, then inshaAllah our sleeping hearts will be awakened. But what will happen if the heart dies? That's when you will find the person becomes a deviant. He leaves the way of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He speaks against Allah forbid against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They slander the awliya Allah. Why? Because their hearts are now dead. Their hearts are now dead. Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala absarihim. Ghishawatun wa lahum azabun azim. Azim. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, these are those, the kufar and the, 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 the enemies of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah puts seals onto their hearts and their eyes and their hearing and their vision. Why? Because azab is destined, destined for them. So think about it. What happens? What is the difference between a sleeping heart and a dead heart? And we must make dua that Allah never causes our hearts to die. Never causes our hearts to die. It should always be alive, even though we are lazy in some way, but it should be alive in the love of Allah and His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one way of keeping the heart charged, you know, we charge everything today. We want to charge our phones, we want to charge uh, our laptops, we want to charge our, our tablets because we want to use it for whatever reason. Allah save us from using it for incorrect reasons. When you use anything in the dunya, use it within the limits of the sharia of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you have to charge them. To make it work, you have to charge. And it's very important to charge the heart, to keep it alive, to keep it pure. And how do you do that? Number one, keep away from guna. Keep away from sin. Do not speak in a vulgar manner. Watch how you talk. Make zikrullah in abundance. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make zikr Mustafa, which is durood in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do not forget, perform your faraid and wajibat in the appointed times. Perform your salah, keep your roza, give your zakat. Because these are your faraid. You have to do this. If you leave all of this, the heart will become diseased. And there will be no ruhaniyat. There will be no spiritual enhancement whatsoever. And the best way, the best way of strengthening the heart how is, which is the best way? How can I strengthen this heart? And I shared some words of Huzur Sayyidi Taj Sharia radiallahu anhu with you a few weeks back. And I'm going to share something from there which Hazrat said, I'm reminding you. The Qutbul Aktab of this era, Huzur Sayyidi Taj Sharia radiallahu anhu, our Shaykh Kamil so beautifully said, what did he say? He said, that heart which is the Medina of the love of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam becomes the fountain of knowledge and wisdom. This is why in the love of Huzur Sarwar Alam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Someone became Hadrat Abu Bakr. Someone became Hadrat Umar. While others became Hadrat Osman and Hadrat Ali. Someone became Hadrat Ghawsi Adam. Someone became Hadrat Mahiyuddin ibn Arabi. And someone became Imam Adam Abu Hanifa. And as for the ones who do not have the love for Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu in his heart, then no matter whatever he may be, Huzur Tal Sharia, what does he say? He says that as for the one who does not have the love of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu in his heart, then no matter whatever he may be, he is nothing. He or she is nothing. So ruhaniyat is this, that let your heart become Medina of the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why my and your ala hadrat radiallahu anh said, ke jano dil, hosho khirad, sab to madine pahunche, tum nahi chalte raza, sara to saman gaya, my soul, my heart, my senses, my mind, and all have reached Medina. You're not going or raza, all your belongings, all your entities have already gone. And what did he say? He says, Dil hevo dil jotari yaad se maamur raha. A heart in reality is a heart which is adorned by your memory, by your remembrance, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dil hevo dil jotari yaad se maamur raha. Sar hevo sar jotari qadmo pe qurban gaya. And a head in reality is that head which is sacrificed at your feet, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is purification of the body. This is purification of the heart. And this is cleansing of even the soul. When, when the heart is attracted in the love of Allah and His beloved Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that is why Allah Hadrat Subhanallah, Subhanallah. This is why Allah Hadrat Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu anhu says that if my heart has to be split into two parts, on one part will be inscribed the name of Allah, and on the other will be the name of Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Subhanallah, this is why his representative, his Janashin, Rasul Waqt. Huzur Mufti Azam Hind radiallahu beautifully says, Habibi Khudaka, 
نظارہ کروں میں دل و جان ان پر نسارہ کروں میں یہ ایک جان کیا ہے اگر ہو کرو رو تیرے نام پر سب کو وارا کرو میں اور خدا ایک پر ہو تو ایک پر محمد خدا ایک پر ہو تو ایک پر محمد اگر قلب اپنا دوبارہ دوپارہ کرو میں در اف دا ہارٹ ہیز ٹو بی اسپلٹ دین آن ون سائڈ شوڈ بی اللہ ون سائڈ شوڈ بی دا نیم آف محمد رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سبحان اللہ دس از دا لیسن دیٹ دا پائس ٹوٹ ہیز دیٹس وائی وی آر بین ٹولڈ اکون ما صادقین سبحان اللہ دس از وائی وی آر بین ٹولڈ اکون ما صادقین اسٹے ود دا پائس پیپل بیکاز یو لرن ہاؤ ٹو پیوریفائی دا ہارٹ یو لرن واٹ از تصوف یو لرن واٹ از روحانیت And you must understand something else while we're on this discussion. That what is the thing that harms the heart the most? What leads to all the guna and all the sin? It is something that is called ghaflat. Ghaflat. Heedlessness. And I'm going to report, narrate to you here a waqya, an incident on this discussion, which I, reported, which I narrated in one of the, my Juma talks at the masjid. I'm going to share that, 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 that narration with you here, and I think it's of utmost importance. How the Sayyidi Shaykh Abu Ali the Qaqra says, He says, I went to visit a very pious sheikh who was very ill. I found his murid seated around him and he was weeping. Very pious man. His murid sitting around him. He was very ill and what he's doing? He's weeping. He says, I looked at him and I said, are you crying for the dunya? In other words, do you love this dunya so much? Do you love this world so much that you are weeping as death is approaching you? He says, the sheikh said, no. But rather I am weeping due to my qaza namaz. Allahu Akbar. I am weeping due to my qaza namaz. Hazrat Sayyidina Shaykh Abu Ali Dhaqaq says, I said to him, but you have always been engrossed in ibadat. Everybody knows. How is it that your salahs became qaza? He said, I feel that I have made every salah in ghaflat, in heedlessness. Now this was his humility. This was his humility. Like Allah Hazrat Azimul Barakat radiallahu anh said, as I explained yesterday in the Qalam, where Allah Hazrat Azimul Barakat radiallahu anh humbled himself and he said, that he is a sinful person and he is, he is somebody with, who is worthless and has nothing. This is what the awliya do. They humble themselves because they, they regard themselves as nothing. They humble themselves. That is why it has always been said that if you want status and you want excellence, then excellence is not what the people call excellence. Excellence in that is that which is excellence in the court of Allah and the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is what the personality is saying. It does not mean that he's saying that we should accept that he was doing guna and he was heedless like we, we are in ghaflat. No. But something that he was, what, whatever he was saying is a lesson to us. What did he say? He said, I, have, I, I fear that I have made every sajda in ghaflat, in heedlessness. And from every sajda I, pick up my, I picked up, I raised my head in heedless, heedlessness. And now I am dying in the state of heedlessness. Allahu Akbar. Imam Ghazali radiallahu has quoted this, which say the, say the Shaykh Abu Ali al-Daqaq radiallahu is mentioning. And think about it. Think about it. He really feared whether his sajdas, sajdas were accepted or not. Or whether he was leaving the world with his creator being pleased with him. Hence he said, he is in ghaflat, he is worried and anxious about his final moments. What about those who do not pray their salah at all? What about those who do not pray their salah at all? And those of us that have the burdensome load of qaza salahs on our heads. We strive to do everything to please others and we fear when we owe someone. Especially if he is someone who can take you to task. I said this before. We cannot sleep at night if we owe the banks money. Why? Because they will repossess our cars and they will repossess our homes. We have sleepless nights when we hear that the taxman is auditing us. And when they demand back payments from us, we're scared of prosecution. Huh? We, we fear jail time and hefty fines. In times like these, when we are locked in our homes, we should look into our hearts and examine and analyze the condition of our hearts. In these days of lockdown and today being the fifth in our country, What have we done? I want to ask, what have we done in 24 hours in each day? How many of us have still missed our salahs and not woken up for fajr? How much of time have we spent repenting and reciting the Quran or the Rood Sharif and other awrad and wazaif? How much of time have we spent in the remembrance of Almighty Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa I'm not talking about the rest of your life or the past. I'm talking about in these five days or six days that you have been in the lockdown that your governments have set. How much of time have you spent repenting? How much of time have I spent repenting and reciting the Quran? Or Duru Sharif and other awrad and wadaif? How much of time have we spent in the remembrance of Almighty Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How much of time have we wasted? Has this time when you have lost, has this time when you have lost your freedom done anything for you? And made you realize how important it is to change your life? Have we looked into our hearts lately? Do we like what we see when we look into your, to our hearts? 
The answer to this question, my beloved brothers and sisters, I cannot give you. Each of you can give this answer to yourself. And I pray that you give yourself a sincere answer. And when you do get the answer to that question, I pray that you do whatever is necessary to make amends so that you change your ruhani condition. You change yourself and enhance yourself spiritually. One of the reasons I chose today the topic of the heart in the session of enhance your spirituality is because Allah willing on Thursday we will have our halqa dhikr. If you looked at the, 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 the message that I initially sent out, we said on Thursdays we will have halqa dhikr together. And before we do, I want you to understand that the zikrullah and the zikr mustafa is the best way to prepare and cleanse your heart. The best way for ruhaniyat. I would like to present to you a short discussion while we're on this regarding zikr and its blessings so that when you do zikr from now on, you will be conscious of its blessings. Allah says in the Holy Quran, you have read it, when you start zikr, most of the ulama, most of the, 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 the leader of the zikr groups, they read this ayat of the Holy Quran, Allah bi-dhikr illahi tatma'innul qulub. Undoubtedly by the dhikr, by the remembrance of Allah is the tranquility of the heart. We read this. So we are now in lockdown. We are in parishani. We are thinking what to do. This is the time to make dhikrullah. Because Allah is saying that the peace and the comfort for your heart, the tranquility for your heart is what? Is zikr. Is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about what I'm saying right now. And inshallah al-azim, you will find great benefit in it. Now dhikr is of many types, but two basic types of dhikr. One is dhikr al-lisan and one is dhikr al-qalb. The dhikr of the tongue and the dhikr of the heart. The great scholars have said, by making dhikr with the tongue, one reaches the continuous dhikr of the heart. Where the heart now makes dhikr with the tongue, it joins the tongue in dhikr. And the real effect of dhikr is when the heart joins with the tongue. And this is what we want. You know, Hadrat Sayyidi Shaykh Abu Ali Dhaqaq, who we just quoted just now, he said something very beautiful. He said, Dhikr is the platform of wilaya. Dhikr is the platform of wilaya. What is wilaya? Wilaya is closeness in the court of Allah. So he says, Dhikr is the platform to wilaya. It is the platform that will take you close in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Dhikr is the platform of wilaya. So whosoever has been blessed with the tawfiq of zikr, he has been blessed with this platform. And from whomsoever the zikr has been taken away, he has been deposed. In other words, he has lost this platform to attain closeness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about how important dhikr lies. How this purifies and cleanses your heart and makes you a better person. Do you know, there's a narration that beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this, this, this narration has been uh, quoted by Sayyidina Imam al-Kushari radiallahu ta'ala an. The beloved, it is reported that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَادِ الْجَنَّةِ فَرَتَعُوا فِيهَا when you pass by the gardens of Jannah, then eat from them. Eat from it when you pass the gardens of Jannah. The companion said, Faqila lahu. They said to the beloved Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa ma riyadul Jannah? Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is riyadul Jannah? They said to him, what is riyadul Jannah? The beloved Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Halakul dhikri riyadul Jannah. The beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the gatherings of zikr are the gardens of Jannah. What's the garden of Jannah? The gatherings of zikr. Subhanallah. It is reported in one hadith sharif. That Hadrat Jibreel Amin alayhi salatu wasalam presented himself in the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, a'ataytu ummataka ma lam a'ati ummatam min al ummami. I have given to your ummah by the grace of Allah that which has not been given to any other ummah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Madaka ya Jibreel. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Madaka ya Jibreel. What is that, O Jibreel? And he said, The words of Allah, Fadhkuruni adhkurkum. Fadhkuruli. Al-Qurkum. In other words, Allah is saying in the Holy Quran, O oh my servants, remember me. I will remember you. In other words, I will, you make my dhikr, you remember me as Rabb, and I will praise you amongst the malaika. Fadhkuruni al-Qurkum. Huh? This is a gift that Hadrat Jibreel Islam has brought for us. Subhanallah. This is given specially to the Ummah of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And talking about the dhikrullah, and I'm going to be ending with a little bit more on this discussion today on dhikr because this is the means of purification of the heart and this is what ruhaniyat is about Hadith Sayyidina Abu Sulaiman al-Darani radiallahu anh, says that in Jannah obviously Jannah is massive nobody can even imagine how huge Jannah is but there is this one special open area in Jannah there is one special field in Jannah that when a person who makes dhikr makes his dhikr the angels start planting trees therein what they do the moment you start making dhikr what do they do they start planting trees therein in that field and sometimes they suddenly stop planting. So they asked, why did you stop? And the angel says, the zakir to whom I am attached has been neglectful of the zikr. 
So to us, they are angels that are attached. And when you make dhikr, they plant trees in Jannah for those for you and I. That is the blessing of the akhirat. And the blessing in the dunya is that it purifies our heart and brings us close. In the court of Allah and his beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's another beautiful narration of Hazrat Sayyidina Hamid Aswad rahmatullah alayhi. He says, very nice, and in a time like this when you are in difficulty and you don't know what to do to come out of your problems, you don't know what to do to save yourself, you don't know what to do to, 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 to protect yourself because we are all confused. Indeed, we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. We know that Allah is our protector, but man is weak. He, he at times, in son's mind, overwhelms him. He does not know which way to find to come out of his issues. Look at this beautiful waqiyah regarding dhikr. Subhanallah. Hadrat Hamid Aswad, rahmatullahi ta'ala, says, one night I was in the company of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Ibrahim Khawas. Sayyidina Ibrahim Khawas was a very great Sufi. Very, very great Sufi. A very blessed personality. He says, I was in the company of Hazrat Ibrahim Khawas. We came to an area which was noted for having many snakes. He said, I was traveling with him and we came to this one place, this mountains region which was known to have many snakes. He said he had a little leathern bottle with him, a mashkiza, a small mashkiza. He placed it on the ground and he sat down and then he rested. So I too sat near him and I too rested. He said, as the night approached, the cool breeze began to blow. And as the cool breeze began to blow, snakes started to appear all over that place. Can you imagine what was his condition when he saw snakes appearing? He says, I shrieked, I yelled and I called out to Hadrat Ibrahim Khawas radiallahu anh. And he said to me, O the Allah, O the Allah, make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah. He says, I started to make Allah dhikr and the snakes retreated, they went back. He said, again they came after a while, so I shrieked again. And again Hadrat Ibrahim Khawas radiallahu anh said, O the Allah, make the dhikr of Allah. He says, my entire night was spent in this way. That whenever they would come, I'd make the dhikr of Allah. And then the snakes would go away. He said, when morning came, Hadrat Ibrahim Khawas woke up comfortably. And then we left for our journey. He said, I followed him. He said, as he descended from one of the hills, a snake which was curled around his body, which neither he had seen nor I had seen, fell off from his body. He said, I asked him, did you not notice it? He said, no, I didn't. I have, he said, because he was asleep at the time. When he got up to move, that's when the snake fell. So I said to him, did you not notice it? He said, I haven't had such a peaceful sleep in a long time. I have not slept as peacefully ever as I slept tonight. Subhanallah. Why was this so? Because Hazrat Ibrahim Khawas had his full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he saw that there was this person, this personality that was with him, was making the dhikr of Allah the entire night. So he knew that I have him making dhikr, none of the snakes are going to harm me. What was this? It was remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, teaching you purification of the heart, but also teaching you that the dhikr of Allah protects you from sickness. The zikr of Allah protects you from calamity. The zikr of Allah protects you from all kinds of things. Keep this in your mind, keep this in your heart, and inshallah al-azim, you will find the barakat in dhikrullah, and that, as I said, and the reason I've touched on the topic of dhikrullah is because of our halqa dhikr on Thursday, and also because of the discussion on the purification of the heart. There are numerous more uh, discussions on this that uh, we can talk about, but time, unfortunately, does not permit to, to talk, uh, to go very in-depth into this. But again, uh, as I've been asked, uh, requested, and I've been trying to do this every day, is a short uh, wazifa for you to pray. Uh, not only during this time, but for, other, for, the, for the rest of your life, whenever you have some time, I'm ending with this wazifa, very simple. Huzur Sayyidi Muhaddi Sayyid Kabir, Sultan al-Fuqaha, Ustaz al-Asatiza, the Imam of Hadith of this zamana, the Amir al-Mu'minin fi al-Hadith, the person who Huzur Sayyidi wa Sanadi Sarkari Taju Sharia radiallahu said that he is the mission that demonstrates the Maslak of Allah Hadrat radiallahu anh, he is a guardian of Maslaki Allah Hadrat radiallahu anh. That Huzur Muhaddis Kabir, who Huzur Sayyidi Taj Shriya said, is the Ghazali of his time. That great Huzur Muhaddis Kabir gave advice. He said, when you are in depression, when you have worries, when you have heart ailments, when you have high blood pressure, all these things that lead to depression, after every salah, keep your hand on your heart, your right hand on your heart. You must have heard Hazrat say this before, but I am saying it here because I feel it is, it is of utmost importance in a time like this, because people are saying we are depressed being inside our houses. We are depressed because we can't go anywhere. Don't be depressed. After Read your salah. After every salah, 
Keep your right hand on your heart, as Huzur Muhaddis Kabira said, and read 11 times, Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innul qulub. Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innul qulub. 11 times, read after every namaz, 11 times, Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innul qulub. Inshallah al-Azim, you will feel peace, you will feel contentment, and Allah will alleviate many of your illnesses by the barakat of Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innul qulub. And I'm going to end by saying something very important. I want you to listen to this and take heed to it, and I'm ending with this, that... We all come to, to the ulama and we go to the to the mashayikh and we go to the to the to the peer sabs and we say, can you give me a wazifa for this and can you give me a wazifa for that? But you read all the wazifas, but no wazifa is going to work for you the way it needs to work if you're not going to read your salah. First, finish your faraiz and your wajibat. Complete your faraiz and wajibat. Read your five times salah and read your wazif. Then you will see the asar of the wazifa. But if you're just going to read wazifa and not going to read salah, your salah and your ibadat is your biggest wazifa. First do that, thereafter do all the other wazaif and all the other litanies, and then you will see the barakat of those litanies. Okay? So Allah bless you all, Allah keep us all firm in deen, Allah protect all of us, the entire Muslim ummah, Allah protect us from this bimari that is spreading and this pandemic, Allah protect our deen, Allah protect our iman, Allah save us from the bad mazhabs and the deviants, Allah save us from sulhe kulliyat, those who are the agents of unholy unity. And I will discuss that in one of the discussions that we will be having, inshallah. Allah keep us with Iman. Let us leave this world with Iman. Wa ma'alina al-balaq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.